everyone, welcome to Outside Extra. It is April and we are here to tell you all the games that we're most excited for this month. Are yes. you excited? April in your face, March. Get out of here, you jerk month. JRPG series Persona is coming to the PlayStation 4 with the newest installment, Persona 5. With classic turn-based combat and a heavy focus on story, the series has gained a huge fan base. All looking forward to this game. So, Andy, are you mm. looking forward to this game? Because I am a complete Persona noob. Yeah, I, I am as well, but I think uh, this might be the first one that I pick up. Yeah. I, I heard a lot of people talk about how great Persona is. I'm yeah. aware of Persona through the Persona Arena fighting yeah. game. So I know the characters, and they're all really cool and interesting. This Persona is part of the RPG series, yeah. which uh, is very, like you say, very story-based. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people really like the way it depicts sort of high school life yeah, in it. Yeah. Um, so all the characters are at school. Uh, or their teachers, yeah. and they just have the ability to summon giant teddy bears. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's really uh, weird. Um, it's one to look forward to, although on the same day, Parappa the Rapper Remastered is oh coming out, so Sony fans are going to be a bit choose. torn. <laughs> also out this month is Parappa the Rapper Remastered, featuring our favourite rapping dog in an orange beanie. Andy. Yeah, I love Parappa the Rapper. You're excited. Yeah, I it's never really good. played it. Never played it. Oh my god, you're really missing out. I it's know. excellent. I mean, it's one of the first rhythm action games, I yeah. think. I mean, it's hard to explain. Well, it's not. It's about a rapping dog. But, um, <laughs> the face buttons on the controller are like uh, different words in the rap, and you have to yeah. press the right ones at the right time. They're all mad. There's like an onion who teaches karate. Yeah, I know the and onion guy. He, you go to a karate lesson, and then he does a rap about how to do karate. There's one where you're doing, a, you've got a driving instructor. It's brilliant. It's so off the wall. I still remember all the raps of punch, <laughs> kick, it's all in the mind. And it's a bit of gaming history. Yeah. A very weird, very unusual bit of gaming history that you should uh, you should check out now that there's a remastered version. Yeah. Pretty pun-filled platonic platformer ukulele is coming to us from the minds behind much-loved Banjo-Kazooie. One of Kickstarter's success stories, this looks to be a modern throwback to 90s platformers. I don't know if you noticed, Andy, but uh, I've got, I've got a t-shirt. I'm everything. really excited so about this game. presumably you hate ukulele? Yeah. You say, not looking forward to it? I am really, really looking really forward to it. it. What's your opinion on the upcoming game? What yeah, I'm really like? looking forward to it. I played the Toy Box demo. Yeah. I played a bit of it at uh, Gamescom or E3 last year. Everything about it is so nostalgic. Like the music is that I can do this, carry on. Just bring me a xylophone. Where's my xylophone? And all the characters talk in that thing where they all go and it comes up with the stuff at the bottom. And it's full of like weird puns and everyone's got stupid names. Platforming and oh, and when you go around with Yuka and Laylee and you're rolling around and they go, yeah. It's really cute. I think it's safe to say the very excited. <laughs> yeah. What you get if a rail shooter and rhythm action game had a baby that got really into dubstep, futuristic game Aero comes to us this month on consoles and PC. So, have you had a go at this? Because this is a game that I played at Res last year and absolutely fell in love with. Yeah, I've, I've seen it. I've not actually played it myself. But I mean, <sighs> with rhythm action games, you really need to play them to get the, yeah, the feel for yeah. them. What's the music like in it? Um, it's really good. It's like a lot of kind of like really cool urban music. KTB is one of the tracks that they've been demoing a lot. Basically Basically, if you like kind of like bassy electronic music, you'll really like it. So what do you, you do? You go along a track and yeah, you Yeah, hit... you, you follow what they call a ribbon. It's moved and mapped in time with the music. Oh, okay. There's big boss battles. It kind of reminded me of like frequency or amplitude. Yes. Um, but it seems, yeah, the stuff like boss battles and mm -hmm. things are sort of taking it a little bit further. Yeah, yeah, no, it looks really fun. Basically, if you like that type of music, just grab it anyway and it's really good. A murder mystery with a time-based twist, the sexy brutal has you solving crimes within an endlessly looping day. So what this sounds like is yes. Groundhog Day, but yes. you're solving murders. Yeah, sort of. I played this uh, a little bit last week at a uh, Microsoft event. What it reminded me of was Ghost Trick, if you've ever played Ghost oh. Trick on the um, 3DS. In The Sexy Brutal, you have a mansion full of murders that are taking place and you have yeah. to stop each of these murders. They just carry on on their normal routine and you have to find ways to sort of interfere with that routine so as to make sure the murder doesn't take nice. place. So the first one that we played, there was a guy who got shot. We found where the gun was before the murderer took the gun and we were able to replace uh, the bullets with blanks. That meant that the murder was avoided. Yeah. So there's all these different, really intricate moving parts on these levels and you have to try and interfere with them but in a way that doesn't throw everything off but yeah. just sort of changes things. It's really cool, really complicated. I really like the, the art style as well. It's yeah. that sort of isometric. It looks really cool, yeah. It was the first time I'd seen it last week. It wasn't really on my radar up no, to that point but no. after playing it I was like, actually that, that seems really cool. Cool. 
fans of the Micro Machines series will be excited about the prospect of racing tiny cars on big kitchen tables as Micro Machines World Series comes to consoles and PC. Okay, so I am low-key really excited about this game because uh, I played Micro Machines V3 on the mm -hmm. PlayStation 1 a yeah, lot. That was a classic. Uh, that was a good yeah. one. Um, so I'm excited for this, but I haven't seen any gameplay footage or anything so yeah, far. Yeah, me either. But I mean, it's quite hard to mess up micro machines. Yeah. You just race around breakfast cereals on yeah. a table, or yeah. uh, I really like the like, pool table level. Yeah, I like so the, the bedroom. And... Yeah, there's a lot of nostalgia there. So, yeah. I mean, you'd have to go quite badly wrong yeah. to mess up a micro machines <laughs> game, I feel like. Yeah. Like, it should be, should be pretty fine. straightforward. There was that um, tabletop racing game that came out maybe a couple of years ago yeah. um, that I really enjoyed, and it just made me want another micro machines yeah. game. So, now that we're getting one, great. Nice. Sequel to Night Vision wielding Scarefest Outlast, Outlast 2 takes us back into the joy of first person survival horror, with a new story dumping us into a creepy, dilapidated village that teaches us not to trust wells. Andy, mm. you have played uh, the demo of this. Yes. Are you looking forward to this game? Uh, yeah, I mean, I like uh, survival horror games. First person survival horror is, I mean, I really enjoyed Resident Evil 7. Yeah. I found the, the Outlast games a bit too just needlessly unpleasant. They're sort of the like the hostel of first yeah. person horror games survival horror games that i enjoy the most are the ones that have i mean they do still have scary visceral yeah. stuff but also it's quite psychological it's just like that tenseness so yeah if, if they sort of dial back the really gruesome stuff or just space it out more space yeah yeah like i'd it. like to see more sort of creepy build to stuff throughout it it's hard to judge it from the demo the demo that ends with you getting pickaxed in the crotch <laughs> but, <laughs> but um i'll still play it i just i'll be interested to see how they're approaching the horror this time if it's just yeah. gonna be as fun on, or if they're going to try and make it a bit more psychological. Mm -hmm. Sniper Ghost Warrior 3 is the latest in this first-person tactical shooter series. Set in an open world and like its more linear predecessors, it also has a bigger production effort behind it. Andy, do mm. you think this series getting like a triple A budget is going to help it? Yeah, well, these I mean, these games have always like sold in inexplicably well. I don't yeah. know if it's inexplicable, people really like being <laughs> snipers. But yeah, they've always sold really well mm -hmm. and they've been sort of more budget titles. So it'll be interesting to see like like if they really put everything behind one and really yeah. go all in on a sniping game. I mean, they've got a bunch of new stuff in this one, so it seems like they're really kind of going all in on it. I like sniping, maybe not enough to carry me through yeah. an entire game. I mean, it doesn't have the obvious attention-grabbing X-ray kill cams that <laughs> Sniper Elite has. That's really easy to put in a trailer and have everyone go, oh, sick. There's some videos on our channel, actually, from Mike about this game, and it, he said it felt more like a Far Cry yeah. game with the open world. You're not always sniping. You're no. going around with a pistol, like stealth, taking out outposts. So when I'm saying I don't know if my interest in sniping can carry me through an entire game, it feels like they've got stuff in there to make sure that that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Nice. Dragon Quest Heroes 2 is a hack and slash game set in the Dragon Quest universe. With a variety of ways to smash your foes to pieces, it offers a story quest and multiplayer options. This is a game that Luke and I had a little bit of a hands-on with, and mm. a video will be coming to our channel very soon. You have not really played um, much Dragon Quest, but it's huge in it Japan. It is huge it's in enormous Japan. Enormous yeah. in Japan. It must be something good yeah, about it. Yeah, like, and this this game very much is a lot of fan service in it because there are a lot mm. of unlockable characters in the game from like the entire Dragon right. Quest. Okay. series and also like ones that were voiced they had the original voice actors come back and revoice them which nice. is quite cool so fans of the series will re really like it I, I just really enjoyed it like it was I think it's a good game to learn about the Dragon Quest universe because like all the characters are there cool and it's a RPG Open yeah, world sort of it, thing. it's it's open world. You go around and you build up a little team. A bit more like uh, I think it's Dynasty Warriors, oh, where you Dynasty, just go yeah, around yeah, yeah. and you just fight like mobs of people. But it's it's really fun. Cool. The result you get if you mixed Unravel with all the scariest parts of Bioshock, horror platformer Little Nightmares hopes to tap into your childhood fears as you play as Tiny Six, solving puzzles on the moor. So, Andy, another yes. scary game for us to talk about. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's not, like, terrifying no. scary. It's just it's a, a different it, yeah. scary to Outlast. There's definitely. a uh, sort of all-pervading sense of unease throughout the whole game. But, yeah, I've played a, I've played a bit of Little Nightmares. Yeah. Unravel is a good comparison. It's sort of like a goth Unravel, yeah. in that it's uh, you're a little person and you've got all these physics-y yeah. puzzles, a lot of pushing boxes so you can climb up and pull switches. And there's a lot of being pursued by a weird thing. So there was yeah. the, the chef in that, yeah. that one demo. The demo that Luke and I played had, I think it was a janitor and he had like really long arms, but then tiny little feet. Yeah. And he was like chasing you with his big arms. So Ooh. 
Um, yeah, it's uh, it's more in in that vein of Limbo or yes. um, Inside. Inside, the, uh, yeah. yeah. The sequel, well, spiritual sequel to that. Those are both great games. I yeah. think they both did pretty well. So if you enjoyed those and you're looking for more of that sort of eerie, slightly unsettling, physics-y puzzle platformer, this is yeah. uh, this is definitely one to watch. Definitely. I had a go at the demo at Gamescom and I was really sad when I had to finish. Yeah. So that's that's my thoughts. <laughs> it's got one of those symbol monkeys in it as well. Yes. They're everything these days, aren't they? What's that about? It's weird. Mm. So there are some of the games coming out in April that we are really excited for. Are there any that you are really excited for that we've not mentioned? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for joining me, Andy. No problem. And sharing your love of Parappa the Rapper. Punch, kick, it's all in the mind. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to us and Outside Xbox, because they're cool as well. And uh, watch some videos that are on here, like over my face. Bye. 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 Oh, this video's all over us. Uh, Get them off me. Uh, uh, it burns. Uh,